Joining us here at ASCO 2012 is Axel Grothy, MD. He is professor of oncology at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So we're going to talk about uh, colorectal cancer. What's the importance of the data that your team has presented here and you've presented recently? I mean, the data that we presented here actually ties into a total of three studies in colorectal cancer which showed survival benefit for patients uh, with metastatic disease in a palliative setting. So the data that we presented, our group presented, uh, er, er, first in San Francisco in January this year, now with updates uh, here at ASCO uh, 2012, refers to a molecule called regorafenib. Regorafenib is a new player in town, a new drug that will hopefully become available for patients with metastatic colorectal cancer sometime later this year pending FDA review. Now, the study actually addressed an, an unmet need of patient, for patients with colorectal cancer in the sense that, you know, in a palliative setting, we use drugs to keep patients alive. We use our routine set of drugs like 5-FU, capecitabine, bevacizumab, cetuximab, panitumab, uh, arenotec, and oxaplatin. And once we've gone through these treatments and tumors become resistant, um, patients might still be in good shape. And they ask us, so what else do you have? And we say, you know, I'm sorry, we might have a little trial here or there or best supportive care, we send patients home. So these patients are in, in a high unmet need. And now in this setting, we conducted a phase three trial in 760 patients worldwide uh, to test this novel agent's regorafenib, which is a pill, uh, to uh, randomize patients two to one against placebo because these patients really didn't have any other treatment option. Regorafenib is a multi-kinase inhibitor targeting various kinases which are involved in angiogenesis, in tumor properties, tumor biology, tumor host interaction. We don't really know exactly which kind of one of those inhibit in inhibitions is responsible for the efficacy, but we did see that the use of regorafenib improved survival uh, with a hazard ratio of 0.77, meaning a 23% re reduction of the risk of dying, 23%. Um, median difference in this poor risk patient population was 1.4 months, meaning shifting patients from 5 months to 6.4 months at a median. Now, not every patient follows the median. So there, I have patients who benefited for almost a year in, with this drug. So it really depends on uh, characterizing these patients better who might or might not benefit. But again, we have a new drug, regorafenib, which improves survival, uh, is an hopefully going to be an option for patients who have failed all other therapies and uh, hopefully we'll be able to yeah, get this drug approved sometime this year. Now you're the lead investigator of the correct trial. That was the trial. You, 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 better, you better get, get the, this correct. The <laughs> yeah, I hope we will get it right. Yeah. Yeah. The data are pretty solid in my eyes, to be honest, but I, no one knows exactly what FDA will do with the data in the end, and I cannot talk about uh, the process right now. So uh, what are overall, are, are there other unmet needs in colorectal cancer? I mean, unmet need in colorectal cancer, if you talk about metastatic disease, refers to um, keeping patients alive with good quality of life as long as possible. And I think uh, the paradigm right now is probably to use the least aggressive therapy possible that is still effective to control the tumor as long as possible, in particular with regard to maintaining patients' quality of life. And we've seen actually two additional data here, data points here at ASCO, which can help us um, go toward this goal, again, with incremental steps. We have not seen a breakthrough like doubling overall survival or curing patients with previously incurable disease. But we've seen along the lines of you optimizing utilization of existing drugs, a survival benefit for the use of bevacizumab beyond progression, a drug that we've been using a long time um, uh, in combination with chemotherapy first line. And we had a long discussion about whether we should, whether it makes sense to use this drug beyond progression because it actually doesn't target the tumor itself and it's thus not kind of uh, um, really subject to the genetic instability of tumors with resistance mechanism, but it targets the tumor host interaction, endothelial cells. So there was some preclinical rational to use bevacizumab as an angiogenesis inhibitor beyond progression. So we continue bevacizumab in second line. And we have data from a European trial now that prospectively tested this hypothesis 820 patients, 
And we do see that the use of this older drug, bevacizumab, beyond progression, is associated with survival benefit. Uh, one, again, 1 1.4 months, hazard ratio 0.82, meaning 0.81, uh, 19% reduction of death events. And uh, I could see that a lot of physicians will consider this meaningful enough with this drug they know and the side effect profile is very well established to just keep patients on this treatment. Now this has financial implications, you know, these drugs are not cheap. They're antibodies, so it, uh, it will be kind of a weighing the option, weighing risk and benefits and financial risks and benefits and making treatment decisions for our patients. It's an, it's an interesting decision because everybody will look at it a different way, but when do you change course? When do you say, when do you say I want to keep going, I want to go further? That's going to be an individual choice, and it's going to be hard to get a lot of people to agree on what to do. But on the other hand, you know, as, as physicians and as patients, we like choices because not every patient fits this one-size-fits-all category. Uh, it's wrong, you know, so having more options available will allow us to make our treatment decisions more individualized, more flexible. And another drug comes into play, a flibercept. It's um, again a drug that was presented last year, but another oral presentation here at ASCO, uh, which showed in again a second line setting, patients who had previously treated, been treated with a, a regimen called Folfox, um, now in second line get randomized to Folfiri plus minus a flibercept and have another overall survival benefit of 1.4 months, again 1.4 months, 18% um, reduction of death events. Um, so in the end, we have three trials right now in the last year that all showed survival benefit for patients, not with a dramatic improvement, but incremental improvement. So I would hope that we can stack these incremental improvements upon each other to some degree, learn how to optimize the use of the drugs, hopefully establish biomarker signatures so that we can select patients' population that can benefit more or less from these uh, agents and thereby really optimizing our treatment approach. Um, so my personal perspective as a, as a practical a practicing oncologist, the more treatment options I have and the more I understand about these treatment options, I, the better I'm able to offer individualized therapy for my patients. So I'm actually quite excited about what we've seen here because it moves the bar higher and it sets the stage for a lot of diving into biology now, identifying why these drugs work and why they don't work in certain other patients. So I think it's an exciting time for us. So you're going to find success just by continually chipping away? We are trying to find success by continuing chipping away and hoping for breakthroughs, you know, but I think we're getting smarter in the process, how we get, how we'll potentially get to these breakthroughs. And we learn from other tumors like breast cancer and lung cancer too. Very good. Dr. Grothy, thanks for stopping by. Thank Best you. of luck in your work. Thank you very much. Dr. Axel Grothy joining us from the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota here at ASCO 2012. Dr. Grothy will provide further discussion of these studies in the Clinical Advances in Hematology and Oncology Supplement on Highlights in Colorectal Cancer from the 2012 ASCO meeting, which will mail with a July issue.